Recently I made a new Home Assistant installation to my Mac Mini. You can install Home Assistant for a couple of different ways. Virtual Machine, Docker and native installations are the most popular ones for typical Intel or AMD based systems anyway. As more and more people are turning to home automation, I think it's important to know how much power these installations consume, especially if you are running them 24-7. Because especially in the Europe, energy prices skyrocketed. As home automation enthusiasts, we need to be careful about how much power our devices are using in. In this video, I will be comparing three major installation types of home assistant. These measurements are really temperature dependent and I will be taking them in my living room. It's 24 degrees and more or less stable. For the power measurements, I will be using this power meter. It is not as accurate as professional test equipments, but it is good enough. Currently I connected one keyboard transceiver, the display connector and also Ethernet connection. I have nothing else connected and I will start it. During the first startup, it draws around 26 and 28 watts. It continues to stay like that after I see something on the screen. After seeing the boot screen, it fluctuates a little bit, but more or less it is in the same range. Currently I am taking measurements on the Mac Mini, but majority of the used Think lines are also suitable for Home Assistant since they are cheaper and more powerful than Raspberry Pis and I think they will give the same results of these tests. When I started seeing the desktop environment, it started fluctuating between 30 and 35 watts. I will open the terminal and start the virtual box for my virtual environment. Currently nothing is installed my home assistant setup and it is the stock installation out of the box. So there are no add-ons or any other automations. And also other installation methods will be the same as well. During the boot up of the home assistant from the virtual box, it is drawing power close to the 35 watts. And as booting process continues, I saw a gradual increase on the power consumption. It's around like 37 watts. I expect more power consumption during the first boot of the home assistant and a gradual decrease after this. Because usually during the first boot, more system resources are used. Right now, Home Assistant started working and I can access it from my devices using the browser and it is drawing around 37 watts and it started fluctuating in a bigger range. Also, I wanted to determine either Wi-Fi or Ethernet connection is taking more power. So I am removing the Ethernet cable first and check the power consumption change. It increased temporarily but I think it is because of the first initialization. And after a few seconds, it is stabilized around 35 watts. And the next thing is I installed back the Ethernet connection and I will start the airplane mode. That will close the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth at the same time. And the power consumption increased a little bit temporarily again to around 40 watts. And it stays above 40. I would have expect internet connection to be more power efficient, but the operating system and also VirtualBox has other processes as well, so I couldn't make a proper conclusion between the Wi-Fi and Ethernet connection power consumption. But I can conclude that they are not the biggest power consuming things. You can use Wi-Fi or Ethernet or both on your home assistant setup. It doesn't affect power consumption a lot. In theory, they should have around 1 watt effect for power consumption each. And I think it is tolerable. I was wondering whether my keyboard transceiver is drawing so much power, but I didn't expect it to affect it that much. And also results didn't give anything meaningful. The keyboard I'm using is a pretty old one and it is drawing around 1 and 2 watts and the modern ones draw insignificant amounts so I think it is nothing to worry about. And except for the first setup, keyboard and mouse is not really necessary for home assistant anyway. Next thing I'm gonna try is the removing the display connector and it reduced the power consumption around 5 watts. After all this test, I will reset the power meter and let it run around one hour. I think this is the most important test that we can do because it is going to work 24-7 like this way. 
Currently, the display connector is disconnected. Also, the keyboard, the Ethernet connections are connected and the Wi-Fi connection is active as well. I'll come back around one hour later. I waited around one hour and I am curious about the results. In this power meter, I can see the total power consumption as well. It drove 0.03 kWh in one hour and four minutes. And this is the average value of it. And the lowest power consumption is around 25.7 watts. And highest power consumption is around 34 watts. The next thing I want to test is the Docker installation. By the way, if you are interested about how to install different installation types on your home assistant, you can click the card on the corner. For this test, I reinstalled the Docker installation and I am starting the Home Assistant from the Docker in the terminal. Again, there is no add-ons installed or any automations. Just pair Home Assistant installation. During the first initialization, power consumption briefly peaked to the 27 watts and then reduced to 21 watts again. After that, it stayed on the same levels. I will again remove the display and leave the keyboard and Ethernet attached and Wi-Fi connected. I will again wait around one hour and we can check the results together. So let's see the results. I waited around one hour and 15 minutes and let's check the values. First I will check the total power consumption. It is around 0.025 watts and lowest power consumption is around 19.2 and highest power consumption is around 24.0 kilowatt. And compared to the VirtualBox installation, Docker installation is definitely drawing less power than the VirtualBox. And as a last test, I will check the native installation. First, I am gonna reset the power meter and I will start the PC. On the native Home Assistant installation, there is no desktop environment installed and all you are going to see is the group screen before the initial boot up and during this time it draws around 24 to 25 watts. After you start booting up the home assistant, you see nothing on the screen, it will be a blank screen and it started drawing around 30 watts. But power consumption during first boot sequence is not really that important I think because most of the time it will not draw that much power anyway. It picked up around 40 and 45 watts. I waited around 20 minutes because I wasn't able to access the Home Assistant from my browser and after it has been stabilized and Home Assistant started working, it started drawing around 21 watts. On the native installation, we don't need a keyboard at all because it has no use whatsoever, but I will leave that in for a fair compression. Also, I am removing the display cable, just like the other installation types. And again, I am resetting the power meter by pressing the reset button. And I will come back here after an hour or so. I waited around 1 hour and 21 seconds. And the power consumption during this duration is 0.03 kilowatt hours. And the lowest amount of the power which is drawn from the computer is around 16.6 watts. And highest amount is 43.5 watts. I think to make a better overview, it would be nice to see all the values in one table with the related calculations. My first tests were on the VirtualBox installation, and on average, it draws around 28.1 watts. And my second test was the Docker installation, and as I was expecting it, it is lower and it is around 19.7 watts. But the last one actually surprised me because I was expecting a little less. However, it draws much more than the Docker installation. On average, native installation draw around 22.2 watts. Let's compare monthly cost of the running home assistant. According to my electricity contract, I am paying different prices for during the day and also during the night. If I calculate the average, it's around $0.343 per kilowatt hour. I have an older contract and it is relatively cheaper compared to the current prices. So you need to calculate it according to your own contract and region. 
There are many online calculators for that and you can do that in seconds. If I were using VirtualBox for Home Assistant, I need to pay around $7 per month. And on the Docker installation, I need to pay around $5 monthly. If I run it on the native installation, I need to pay around $5.6. And if you take a look at the yearly cost on the virtual machine environment, I have to pay around $85. And on the Docker installation, I have to pay around $60 per year. And on the native installation, I have to pay around $67. What do you think about these results? Were you already expecting these results? Or was it a surprise for you as well? And would you consider changing your Home Assistant installation after this video? Please share it down in the comments because I am really curious about that. And if you like this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up and see you next time.